well, that was awkward. <laughs> and if you think that it was uncomfortable for you, I can promise you it was even more uncomfortable for me. You see, when you have something to say and people are waiting for you to speak and the words won't come out right, it's a horrible feeling. And that feeling brings back some pretty painful memories for me. Take a look. When to chase? That's one question police are trying to answer tonight as they launch a full investigation into this morning's deadly crash at the intersections of 3rd Avenue and Richard Arrington Jr. Boulevard. ABC 3340's Varian Walton has been following this story this afternoon. She joins us now live from the newsroom with the details, Varian. Everything ch ch changed. Life was d d dark and I c c could not face it. Hiding my emotions only w w w worked for so long. I d d didn't know why I was c c clinging to the idea of s s strength when I needed something to m m m make me happy. So that was me in the year 2000 at the height of my television news career, complete with the official TV news haircut. <laughs> and then me just two years ago trying to read aloud clearly after five months of speech therapy. So because of the journey I'm going to tell you about today and despite a lifetime as a public speaker, I am practically terrified to be speaking in front of you today. But here's the deal. I decided to push through that fear because my hope is that through my story that you will see one of the keys to being unlimited is to know who you truly are. So let me start at the beginning. When I was a kid, I wasn't very athletic, and at some point I realized that writing and public speaking were the skills that were the most life-giving to me. They were also the things that my friends and adults complimented me on the most. I went on to star in high school plays, be the editor of the yearbook and newspaper, and I even won speech competitions. Sure, I had stage fright like most of us, but I always felt the most alive on stage. I eventually went on to become a television news reporter and anchor, reporting live local news to as many as a million viewers a night. And then that career, plus my volunteer youth ministry experience, led me to become a high school video and communications teacher. And I even spoke at teacher conferences across this country. And then one day, during our school's winter break, I started to notice that there was a disconnect between my thoughts and my speech. I didn't tell anyone about it at first because I was scared about what was happening, but then eventually the delays became longer and it became clear that it was a speech impediment or a stutter. I sought doctor after doctor, specialist after specialist, and no one could figure out what happened. It was almost like I'd had a stroke, but I had not. So here I was, a communications teacher with a major communications problem. Now most of my words, for no apparent reason, had extra sounds and syllables. I found myself in speech therapy relearning how to say simple words like pants, house, soup, watch. That one's still hard. I learned firsthand how isolating and misunderstood the disability of stuttering can be. I had to turn to guest teachers and students to help teach my classes. I avoided parties, and if I did go, I would stand in the corner and just talk to a few close friends quietly. I dreaded making phone calls or leaving voicemail messages. Having never thought twice about ordering at a restaurant before, now I had to practice saying things like grande cafe mocha and then get up the courage to f fight the fear to go up the barista and give my order because it would take a really long time. And when I did get the courage to speak up at those parties, I was often mocked and mimicked by my own friends who didn't know what was going on and they thought I was making a funny voice. One time, one of my friends even asked me if I was trying to sound retarded. So after months of no possible solutions and no chance of improvement, it seemed, I was sad, stressed, worried about my teaching career, 
I wondered if I would ever stand on a stage like this again. There were already people in my life who only knew me as a stutterer. At about that time, I also happened to be leading a class for my church. The goal of these classes was to find your true identity, the person who God created you to be. Ironic, huh? Here I was, dreading public speaking, and I'm leading this class when I'm in the midst of my own identity crisis, asking those classic questions of who am I, where do I find worth and value, and then can I continue to teach if I can't speak clearly? So you're probably wondering, how am I speaking so clearly today? After a year of struggling, a new doctor, a neurologist, decided to try me on medication for Parkinson's disease. You see, that disease has a speech component to it, and we've basically found a drug that's controlling my speech. If I miss a dose, I'll start stuttering within hours. And sometimes it still just randomly happens. The only bummer with the medication is that it causes me to be constantly drowsy, and that's definitely been a life adjustment. At the height of my speech problem, two of my filmmaker friends interviewed my students about what was it like for them to watch me during this situation. Take a look at that video. He got up, like all serious, and then he tried to, he tried to say it, but he had the stutter on, so he got really frustrated with himself. Some of you may have started noticing that I've had this stutter, and um, like it's just started developing. I didn't know what to say. No one knew what to say, sort of, because you can't be like, congratulations. Watching him suffer, like just standing right up there in front of everybody and just like not get through what he wanted, and I felt his like suffering. I'm like, oh, that just sucks. Before winter break, he was very eloquent when he spoke. He had that newscaster um, style of speaking. And um, now it was just like broken up by chops of just the stutter. And it kind of freaked us out a little bit because he always, he had a very kind of booming voice. I think that was really important and I, I really admire him for standing up in front of the class and telling everyone because I know that was really hard for him to do. And I admire him for doing that. When he went to therapy, they told him he had to like work through his stutter. So it got worse at first. He definitely has gone more vulnerable when, when you're on that subject or even just when he's talking because it, it's not something he can hide. But I'm glad he told us because it not only helped us like connect with him, but it also helped us like kind of kind of get like another dimension of a teacher. You know, I really see him as a mentor, like a, like a figure in my life that's really been impactful. And, and the main reason for that is because he's been so, so honest with us and so open with us. And I feel like he, out of anybody at this school, knows me the best. And I feel like now I know him a little bit better too. Watching that video was like a wake-up call seeing how those students responded me, to me in the midst of my crisis was like opening a window to remind me of my true identity. You see, I realized that I had shown strength and courage and determination in continuing to teach with the help of others. I also turned to my other strengths of writing, sharing my thoughts and feelings, and blogging online. And I developed a keener sense of empathy for my friends and family, especially for my mom, who is right now battling stage three ovarian cancer. And I would like to think that if the stutter returns, which it very well could, that I would still be here today sharing this story with you. I'm pretty sure it would take a lot longer than the allotted time. <laughs> but here's the gift I found in this. I am more than my speech or any neurological problem. You, I, all of us are more than any one talent, skill, or adversity. Challenges are just an opportunity for change, and it's our choice how we respond to them, because we are unlimited. As a visual artist, I wanted to create an image that would help me remember the lessons I learned in this time. 
So I worked with a local artist to design this picture that is now a permanent reminder with me of who I am. The lion represents Aslan from the Chronicles of Narnia, who's my favorite character from fiction. And to me, he represents the strength, courage, and perseverance I realized I had in this. Underneath the lion, you see a biblical verse from Ephesians, and it reminds me that I am loved, blessed, chosen, hopeful, accepted. It was something that I was teaching others that I now truly believe about myself. And I, oh, it all to a speech impediment. And I can honestly say, this has not been easy, but it has been a joy to speak to you today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.